Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Sarah, this is Nick. We're a British couple who left the UK many years ago in search of something different. We bought a small village house in Andalusia and a little old van to take us and our two dogs on new adventures. Over the last few years, we've explored over 25 countries in our old van, but now, after receiving an incredible offer, we backpacked from southern Spain to northern Europe to collect a replacement home on wheels. We've spent the last few months in Germany making the van our own, with a little bit of travel in between. Join us in today's vlog back in Berlin as we prepare for the long drive south and the arduous task of importing this van back home to Spain. guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the car park we're still in in berlin <laughs> <laughs> we haven't left uh, it's the weekend now we're still kind of in limbo at the moment we were waiting to hear back from the company in spain about the whole importation thing and camperization we're waiting to get an appointment to get our export plates and time is running out but we're not going to worry about all that today we're feeling confident we're stressed about the whole situation but we're feeling confident about the whole situation can you be stressed and confident yes you can all higgledy piggledy <laughs> we are but the sun is shining today we're going back into the city um we we had a nightmare last night oh last night was not a good night camping wild camping in the city we've been here for a few days now first few days were totally fine but then last night it all got a bit weird parked up um and at night two blokes two guys came and pretty much peed on the van yeah out the back <laughs> so one we just spotted him in like the mirror and he was having a pee right outside the back of the van like literally splashing his pee on the van and then um about two hours later i was just doing dinner i was in my underwear actually in the kitchen doing dinner with like a little top on and, and just my pants and i heard a noise at the back of the van the, the back of the van door was open a tiny bit and i was we were talking we were having a conversation and i heard a noise so i just pushed the door open i thought it was like trees or something there was a guy just stood there and, and just peeing pretty much against the side of the van and he soon started off and i thought oh, I was just in shock. Like he, he must have knew we were in there. We had the lights on, and I was talking. Mm. Anyway, that's uh, and then that's later why on, the some shifty characters walking around the side of the van. Yeah. We had the side door open, watching a show, and saw a guy go past, shone the torch, and he was gone. Yeah, this was down the other end of the car park. And then after all of that palaver, um, which we weren't too bothered about, we are in the city. It's going to happen. And then the wind picked up, and we had an acorn shower. Don't worry, babies, it's okay. Have you ever lived in a van and you've got a metal van, roof of the van, acorns on it, storm came in, acorns dropping down, it is very, very loud. Very, it's like loud. fireworks or gunshots yeah, going off. The dogs were so scared. So we had to scarp around the car park with our torches to try and find an area without acorn trees because all of that side is full of big trees. They were dropping, there was car alarms going off. <laughs> anyway, so we moved back down here where it's open and then eventually, we got a good night's sleep eventually eventually but today's going to be a good day yeah. sunshine and we're going back into the city we're going to meet up with frank and emily Yay. hopefully in the temple hof which is like the abandoned airfield yeah um which yeah, should be fun but first we need to go shopping so yeah apart from the uh, acorn showers that you might get if it gets a bit windy and the fact that there's men that like to urinate <laughs> on your van. It's a city in it, it's a city what you got to expect. Some things just not on your van. I know. So apart from that, it is actually a really good place to wild camp here uh, for visiting the city because there's the van, this is the car park and here is the S-Bahn.
They've been sleeping. So round two, we've got the doggies and we're heading into the city to meet the guys. And to say that the dogs are excited about seeing Frank and Emily again is an understatement. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This one. Oh, Cheers, man. guys. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> it's actually really mini, isn't it? Single file, please. Single file, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> So guys we've had a lovely afternoon with Frank and Emily. Went to a nice little craft, craft beer garden, craft yeah. beer house. Oh it's lovely. Really little really taste, nice. little taste rails. I had a nice fish and chips, enjoyed that. Yeah, very um, good beer, very good food. Very, very good company. company. We did plan to do a little interview with them about the, how they came up with their plans for the van and how they decided on the layout. But we just got chatting and had one too many beers. Well I did, they're only small but you know. Um, so we will be back to meet these guys again. That's Sarah's lunch for today, apple and broccoli. <laughs> I eat the skin and Dizzy has some of the flesh. Not keen on the skin, he'll spit it out. I'm surprised he's eating it because it's a little bit it's a little bit sour these ones. Mm. Nice. I do the boys' broccoli as well. So they have like regular dog food, but they also have like some foods like broccoli, some fruit, little bits so they don't get ready poops. Um but anyway, good morning. And uh, yeah, we've um, left Berlin, the main area of Berlin, and we've come to the outskirts. We just need to escape the city. We've been there for several days in that car park. It's way too, he way too hectic. People peeing on the van and acorns everywhere. So we've left, we've come to the outskirts and we also needed to fill it with water. And so we've got a motorhome stop with power and water. So everything we need. So we're just gonna like hunker down here and wait for our export plates appointment, which should could be any day. So yeah, we can get a train from here so we can just go into the city. So it's really cool. And uh, yeah, we're just doing some work on the laptops, but we have got something cool planned for this evening, what we're very excited about. And we are going to film it. So you'll have to join us later on this evening. You want more, do you? <laughs> And yeah, so we'll catch you guys in a few hours time. Oh, we spat it out. So guys, what do you think of the new threads? I've got myself a new set of PJs, so I've got myself a new nighty uh -huh. in preparation for tonight's event. There's nothing better than a new nighty, <laughs> is there? <laughs> now, nothing incredible is happening, but we're re we are really excited. We've found our powered stop. We've found our stop with water. We've filled up. We've plugged in. We've been to the supermarket. We've got, got the heater on. We've got the heater on. So lovely and warm in the van. Got ourselves some new comfy clothes. 
Got the popcorn ready because tonight we're having a movie night thanks to today's sponsor of the video and that is Asus. Yes, can you believe that Asus are sponsoring this video? Asus! So this is the Zen Beam L1 and we are about to have our first ever movie night in the new van. Uh so this is microwave popcorn, but we couldn't get like the regular stuff, but if you take it out of the bag and put it in the pan, it's gonna do the same job, right? No lid to the pan, definitely not regular popcorn. That was really quick. Good morning! Good morning guys, how much fun was movie night last night? So good. We've been dying to do that for so, so long. Bit of a late night last night, a bit of a late start this morning. Lazy start. Lazy. Well, the dogs were lazy, they just couldn't be bothered to get out of bed. They really enjoyed the movie. Extraction 2, quite action packed, wasn't it? Very action packed, but oh my gosh, it's so good. It just just fills up the whole space. We were we were really impressed. That that projector is incredible, really. It's only small. Yeah, that projector. I don't yeah, know whether you, don't that know whether you there. notice it there. Just looks like a like a table ornament. So this thing may be small, but it packs a big punch. Not only does this little projector blend into your surroundings, look very pleasing on the eye, but it also has a great picture. It projects HD picture, 300 lumens, and it's got this short throw technology. So from a distance of one meter, you get a 40 inch screen. 60 inch TV in your van at a distance of 1.5 meters. Change that to three meters meters you get a 120 inch screen we just have it on the sofa next to us and it fills that whole side door that's why we haven't put a window in the van yet we're toying with the idea do we need one do we lose that projector home cinema space for a window or do we just keep it because this little thing is great it's so easy to set up you just turn it on and you're away and it also doubles up as a bluetooth speaker <laughs> For battery life, for a speaker it will last 10 hours, for a movie or watching shows it will last up to 3 hours. How good does that look on the shelf? It's amazing isn't it? Do you know what I like about it? <laughs> Go on tell us, share it. What I really like about it is it blends in with my leggings. <laughs> <laughs> and our sofa. Oh look at that. It just fits the colour scheme. But check this out. This is all you have to do. Just get a random piece of wood. Plonk it down next to your dog, put the projector on the wood, switch it on, and then you've got a blinking 50 inch, 60 inch TV, however close or far away you have it. On it, it's that easy. Like we've had projectors before and you have to like fanny around kind of like angling them towards where you want them, getting them right, and do you know what I mean? It will just naturally adjust the, the vertical alignment. You can have it on a coffee table hanging up. You can outside, you can have it on a tripod and you have to have it parallel to the wall, if you know what I mean. But vertically, you can have it any height, you can have it on the ground and it will just sort itself out, amazing. This has got a remote control, but we prefer just getting your old mouse out and you can plug the mouse directly into it. So as we've been struggling a little bit with internet, we've been generally using this through the HDMI cable connected to our laptop, watching shows that we've already got downloaded. But you can just connect this straight to a Wi-Fi and then you can watch like Netflix and YouTube and stuff like that, um, which we're very excited about doing because then you've literally just got that. You don't even have to have your cables hanging out of it. You can mirror your phone as well and you can charge your phone as well whilst mirroring it and also what's very very cool about this is you can have a massive cinema screen A lot of people have said are you gonna get windows installed in your van well now we've got this little projector we can have any window, any anywhere, scene. any view, any time. <laughs> 
If you're interested in getting yourself a little travel companion, a little travel projector, then this is the one for you. The Asus Zenbeam L1 is a perfect little addition to your van life kit. It certainly is. So check the link in our description, guys. Find out some more information about this. We absolutely love it. And thank you so much, Asus, for sponsoring our video today. Right, which Explores video are we going to watch next? Yeah, let's go! Come this. Yeah. Hello. Oh, don't mummy's naked. Mummy is naked. Yeah. You're actually following us on our Instagram and our Facebook stories. You'll know that we've been running every day. Um, not major. Like today, we did four kilometres. Um, quite a okay pace. Six minutes. Six minute kilometres. Half marathon by the end of the month. Feels good once you're done, but I just really don't like doing it at all. I need to get some headphones. We both need headphones. We don't have any music at the moment. So you're just running and all you're thinking about is how much further you've got to go. It's not it's not very pleasurable. But yeah, you just push yourself and you get through it. So yeah, it's good Nick isn't it? Nick said he could have done like three more or something today, three I've, more kilometers. I think after the first like 500 meters, body sort of just gets used to it you get a rhythm and you go into autopilot but um, he doesn't hate it as much as i hate it so you can't talk to sarah i'm the when worst running. <laughs> running partner ever you can't say anything well you can but i just won't answer you at all not even a yeah no grunt anything i just can't speak i just have to just get it done and darling you look tiny on the camera yeah. <laughs> That's the run out the way. This is like the walk. This is like the warm down. The warm walk. down walk. And do you know what? It's actually really hurting my back and my legs When now. you stop, it really hurts. When you stop and then walk, it hurts. Um, yeah, the doggies are feeling all left out. So we're doing a little walk. Walk to the supermarket, get something for dinner. Got our recycling here. Germany is so good for recycling. Basically, any plastic bottle or can you get generally from any supermarket um, you can take to any supermarket, it doesn't have to be the same one. Yeah. Drop it off and you get 25 cents. Yeah, but you pay for that first, mm. obviously. You pay it on top for your bottles of water or whatever. You don't just get 25 cents for free. <laughs> so if you come into Germany for the first time... I think they also have this system in um, Scandinavia as well, if I remember rightly. But make, don't, make sure you don't just have the right change. You need a bit extra, because if you go to the till with just the exact money for a load of water bottles, then you'll get a nasty surprise when they charge you like an extra 25 cents each bottle. But, <laughs> Good point uh, actually. <laughs> well I went there, I went, I forgot about that. I went to the shop the other day, got a beer. I was like, she's overcharged me. And then forgot about her 25 cents. But yeah, it's really good. When did good. you go to the shop and just get one beer? On the run, on that secret run the on other the day. the secret run, he's <laughs> secretly running to the shop and getting beer. But it's a really good system because I've seen round Berlin, you've seen like homeless people, people with not as much money with like trolley full of cans yeah. and things like that. So they're picking up litter, getting rid of rubbish off the streets. And, um, and then they're collecting all of the re the recycle money, yeah. which all adds, it adds up to quite a lot if you've got a hole. Yeah. You can collect a lot, so it is a good system for sure. Two euros fifty to spend. You can buy whatever you want with that, or you can just ask them for the cash back. started off very very well in the veg section it just got worse and worse can you do fish and chips in an omni oven on an electric hob thingy majiggin the answer is yes you can 
but it takes a very, very long time. So <laughs> last night the plan was to have like a nice vegetable curry or something, you know, fairly healthy. And then at the end of the shopping spree, I ended up getting curly fries because I knew my husband would love me forever if I got curly fries. Yes, I would. <laughs> and we got. Like, and we got like these fish portions and we got like breaded mushrooms. I thought I'll try it in the, in the on the oven. It took forever to cook. It was good right at the end of the night, like really late, but it took forever to cook. So I mean ovens are really good, but I think you probably should use gas, stick to gas with them. But anyways, we've got leftovers of curly fries and breaded mushrooms today. And I'd say they've taken probably about 45 minutes and they're looking pretty good now. So we're going to have our leftovers in a minute. Um, I will just apologise for the messy kitchen. You know, had a, bu had a busy day, so I haven't tidied up properly yet. Um, anyways, how are you, my darling? I'm all right. Feeling better for starting running, but getting a little bit sick of the waiting game, waiting to get an appointment for the export plates, which should have taken a few days. It's now a few more days and a few days and waiting for this company to get back to us after we sent a folder with all invoices, receipts, schematics, everything to them and waiting for them to get back. So we're once again in kind of limbo, um, but would like to, while we're waiting around, would like to thank everyone for the lovely messages. Well, most people for the lovely messages. There's a few in there which are a bit nasty, a bit rude, and I don't like it. Sorry, there's only a few trolls out there, but when trolls start picking on other subscribers messages so they go into a message that someone's wrote to us and then they start picking faults of that so don't There's bother no need for rudeness. if you don't like watching then don't watch um anyway yeah but we did want to address um what's going on with the van lots of people have said suggestions so we did want to sort of go into that do you want to join me for this sarah yeah, because I'm all sat all awkward behind the camera. I'm sat all really. awkward, didn't you? I feel like I can't move, otherwise I'll ruin the shot. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, to clear things up, um, options for this van. So lots of people, or quite a few people, have said, why don't we sort of import it into the UK and keep it on UK plates, or then import it to Spain? Well, we can't really do this. few reasons, can't do this. We're, we're citizens of... Britain, British citizens, but we've got residents in Spain. We live in Spain, so we can't by law, we should just take it to Spain. And you can't really do that anyway. Since Brexit, anything to do with like importing, exporting either way is just gonna be crazy money for the taxes and import tax and export tax. It'd just be ridiculous. Mm. Even an Amazon order from the UK now, you pay quite a lot of tax. So you can imagine like a thing, like a car that's worth a lot of money. And the other option was to keep it on German plates and just drive it around. Well, um, we, were, we were kind of hoping to delay importing it into Spain and to use a friend's address, insure it, get German insurance so it's all legal in Germany and because the vehicle inspections for two years in Germany and only six months in Spain so we're hoping to sort of give it an extended test drive and try out the van and, and can do that but we found out when we got here or soon after that you have to be a resident, you have to be a resident of Germany and you can't you can't blag it they ask lots of questions we're not we're law-abiding citizens we don't yeah, want to break the law we want to do everything right i mean you, this probably weighs round us keeping it on german plates probably but it isn't the right thing to do why don't we just kind of get it legal so that would have yeah. anyway that would have just been putting off the inevitable that we have to import it to spain so exactly importing it, it to spain is basically the only option um, now to do this we were before when we got the offer from Frank and Emily we started looking into things and on certain forums and certain people were saying and we did speak to a, a company who help import cars and um, a lot of people were saying it can't be done or you'd have to take everything out of the van import it in as a plane van and then do the camperization in Spain they said you wouldn't be able to import it as a self build but then we got in contact with this company fairly local to us and that was like three months ago that was in june the and first we, communication yeah, was, and we yeah sent... before we left hopefully it is going to be okay because we have this company although things are dragging on and we are getting quite nervous mm. but um yeah so we sent photographs to them and you know saying it's uh, our, our friends giving us this camper van he's half built it and we've sent 
documents, invoices, all this sort of jazz to them. And they're saying the engineer says it shouldn't be a problem. We have to pay extra money. It's like half or less than half the amount if you do it separately, the import and then the camperization thing in Spain. Doing it this way, um, it costs, yeah, quite a bit more because you have to get an, an engineer specialized, to do an specialist, individual... Specialist engineer, yeah. not just like a regular engineer. <laughs> So yes, today is Thursday, so we have waited right up till the last minute before this vlog goes out because we were hoping to give some more information, like to find out the appointment for the export plates and find out more information about our company in Spain, but we are still waiting. We think we're going to hear today or definitely We were tomorrow. hoping to have the export plates yes. and then pop into Berlin and then start heading off in this vlog, but you know, it's yeah, <laughs> but that should be definitely happen next week mm. folks um so yeah i think we'll we'll just have to call it there for now and catch all you guys up next week where we should be leaving with some positive we will be leaving we will be leaving <laughs> we will be leaving berlin and heading south keep your fingers crossed for us and as usual leave us some messages of what you think about all this situation but be kind and be kind to the the other people in the comments section because you know we've got thick skins we don't mind but i think it's nice to be nice to people anyway, anyway yeah make sure you follow us on our other socials if you want to daily updates guys happening right <sighs> over there and um and we'll see you all next thursday yeah for a happy vlog take care guys see you next week morning folks welcome back to the channel welcome back to berlin and uh we are in the car park where we were last week oh. good boy <laughs>